Most of the conversations we had focused on students and how we support student learning, but many practitioners and researchers consistently pointed out that we need to connect the conversations we have about supporting students with the conversations we have about supporting educators. Not only are they deeply connected, the way we support educators becomes a model for how teachers then support students. Here's some of what we heard. What matters for the adults in the building and the kind of learning and professional development that you want for your adults in the building mm -hmm. should be really similar to the kind of learning and development we expect of our students. Student. And that, that parallel structure um, holds up pretty well, I think, in terms mm -hmm. of learning theory. Through the internal coherence project, we worked a lot on leaders creating conditions for teachers to engage in the kind of learning uh, that I've described. So mm -hmm. in order to create those conditions, they have to do a few things. One is they have to be able to model learning themselves mm -hmm. and to encourage a climate of what we call psychological safety. This mm -hmm. comes from some good research by um, Amy Edmondson, among others. And the idea is that risk taking is no longer seen as uh, a detrimental um, something that is detrimental. Mm -hmm. I can take a risk. I can try something new in my classroom. I can let my students struggle a little bit. And mm -hmm. I myself as a learner, as a teacher can struggle and that will be okay. Um, and so leaders need to create these conditions so that um, learning can occur. The other lesson that I just um, hope beyond hope that we can really hold on to, you know, through this experience is this opportunity that we've all experienced to rapidly on solutions to very tough problems to you know try something out get some feedback on it iterate on it you know going going back to my reflective learner kind of opening from the beginning like that's that's what learning is all about that's what we as educators should be thinking about lead learning and i think we've gotten into the habit decades old of thinking, you know, that we always need to lead with the perfect answer, with the perfect plan, that this can't be messy, we can't kind of like uh, show our vulnerabilities and hey, here's something I'm exploring, here's something that I need to know. Like we would have never gotten there as far as we've gotten. We've talked to teachers who've gone through intensive professional development and they say they love the professional development. And we say, but we didn't see you doing anything differently in your classroom. So can you tell us what that's what that's all about? And the teacher would or the teachers would say back to us, well, my principal has a pacing guide and my principal walks by my classroom at mm -hmm. least once or twice a week. And I feel like I can't do the things that I learned about in the professional development because I need to be on the pacing guide, which means I need to be moving along at a pretty fast clip and I need to be doing another teacher would say, well, I love the professional development. I did it for a year, but then the district had a sort of RTI type thing come in where mm -hmm. we were required to do remedial instruction as 20, the first 20 minutes of our math class. And that meant that I couldn't mm -hmm. enact the professional development ideas in the way that I wanted. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a huge part of this, huge part of the success of these programs is the sort of alignment and the coherence into which they are going. So if mm -hmm. you have a program that is at cross purposes with your teacher evaluation system, with your pacing guide, with your assessment, with other sources of Or with other PD, right? Other like, PD, totally. I got a thinking maps PD and now I have to do that. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Teachers need high quality professional learning, curriculum based professional learning to go along with those materials so that they're able to provide that kind of student centered, phenomena driven, problem-driven, three-dimensional teaching and learning that takes a lot of time, uh, takes a lot of listening, and uh, some pretty significant shifts in, in practice. So it's professional learning alongside access. All of our teachers are having their first year. Think about mm -hmm. that. We have teachers, mm -hmm. we're, get, we're uh, communication sit pins to all of our, our we couldn't have our, our normal convocation type experience and so we have teachers who are celebrating 30 years celebrating 25 mm -hmm. years but in reality <laughs> it's their first year our team has focused on as dr Daphne said uh, building professional learning opportunities for our teachers that is embedded that is mm -hmm. tiered that's differentiated 
that is available on their time that does support the expectations that we set across the district for that high quality instruction and high quality curriculum. Yeah. But really what we look at now is as we are in the, in, in the implementation phase into the, um, now we are actually teaching and we are expecting learning from all students. Mm -hmm. Now it's coming in and monitoring to make sure that the expectations are being fulfilled. And then also being formative with our, our oversight and that what now can we do to better improve our teachers' practice? What now mm -hmm. can we do to support them to be uh, ensuring that all students have equal outcomes and, and at a high level? We are very much focused on students and we're very much focused on how the schools will be organized and what kinds of new routines will we have. But we're mm -hmm. asking teachers to do things very differently than we've asked mm -hmm. them to do before. And that's always true in any kind of school reform effort. Um, you're always asking teachers to learn something new. And so now after or during the pandemic, when teachers return to school, you're asking them to learn some technology or mm -hmm. learn some uh, new apps on their phones mm -hmm. and that students are going to use. And um, let's not forget about how um, we organize the adult learning in the building and make sure that those adults um, we're allowing the adults to not only have some agency over their learning, but also to grapple with and struggle with um, the complexities in the way that we're asking students to do so. So let's not just tell our teachers what to do. Let's engage mm -hmm. them in making that sense and making that meaning uh, and trying to have some good conversations about instruction with our adults. I think that the most important thing that I am thinking about right now, and I think that we're asking folks in our communities to think about is not the the what of those solutions, but the values we're gonna lead with. So often, particularly in this moment where we are presented with such technical challenge as we are in the fall, not just as it relates to remote learning, not just as it relates to intervention, but how are we gonna get kids into school safely? How are we going to practice social distancing? Like there are such huge technical challenges ahead of us. It's easy to jump to what we will do. Um, mm -hmm. Equally as important is the why we mm -hmm. will do it, which should feed into the how we decide to do it. Across these conversations, I had three takeaways. One, teachers understand how to engage and support students based on the way they see their leaders engage and support their learning. Two, a culture that values learning must be a culture that values risking mistakes. Only if teachers see their leaders take risks and learn from them will they feel safe doing the same and make it safe for students to do the same. Three, all of the themes we have discussed so far apply to teacher learning as much as they apply to student learning. Relationships and learning are inseparably connected. What leaders expect of their teachers influences what teachers expect of themselves. Teachers engage and learn best from work that is challenging, relevant to their jobs, and helps them understand and impact the world. Moving forward into new content for teacher learning will advance learning more than stopping and going back. Even a great plan will not work for all teachers. Continuously monitoring, understanding, and meeting needs will. Thank you so much for joining this learning journey with us. I hope you'll share what you've learned and taken away using the Rethinking Intervention hashtag. As we said at the start, never before has it felt more important to be clear on what we know works and what we know doesn't work. It was the professional privilege of a lifetime to have these conversations, to share them with you. And the learning is by no means done. So stay tuned and we'll keep you posted on where we go from here. But for now, I hope that you're walking away from these conversations inspired by how much we do know and energized by what we can do together. Thanks so much.